Hi, welcome to the Art Corner. Um, today we are going to do a sky tutorial. I have a lot of people tell me that as artists, doing skies are hard. And I have my own little method that I'd like to show you how to do a background and a sky tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something today. I don't know that we'll get a finished picture per se, but I hope you learned something. Hope to finish with a rainbow, so cross your fingers. Okay, what we want to do first is start a horizon down at the bottom. This sort of gives you just a dark base. I have got a couple of different blues, a medium and a dark blue with your white. And remember too that white can be used as a primer. It helps with your blending process. So I'm gonna start down here and let this dry as we move on up just kind of want to show you a, a grounding per se for the sky tutorial. We'll pretend like maybe this is the ocean, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a mountain or whatever we want it to be. And then I want to get use a contractor's brush, a great big one that's real fluffy and light that won't lose a lot of hair. I'm going to squirt some white down here and I'm going to start with the white right above the horizon. And I want to show you how to kind of blend your background. I'm using acrylic this today. Let's see. I'm going to tap just a little bit into my blue. Get your contractor brush. Dip it in your water. Got to load your brush with the paint. And then you want to do a gentle back and forth motion on your canvas. Take it on up. Get down into this dark blue area that I started with, with your white. That'll put a little bit of that blue paint on your brush and drag it up like this, okay? Let's see if we can't drag that up. Now, I'm gonna load my brush again. I don't want too much paint on the canvas all at once because this, need, oops, this needs to dry in order for us to get our clouds started. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this time of year, I've seen some beautiful, beautiful skies lately. And I just thought it would be a wonderful thing for, to do on this show. Uh, and most paintings have a sky in it. <clears throat> so you want to learn how to do them well. It's a big part or a, of every painting that you're gonna probably do, or most paintings. Now the good thing about a nylon brush, they don't usually leave a lot of hair on your canvas. That's kind of aggravating. Starting up here with a little darker blue. Now, going back into my white just a little more and I'm gonna drag it down here. And you could use a smaller brush if you wanted to, but it takes more time, it's not as even. These are great for skies and backgrounds, just a great big contractor's brush. Now, blend it back and forth, and this kind of gives you a good background for any sky. This is gonna be a bright sunny day. Getting fingerprints down here. Now. We need to let that dry just a little bit. There we go. You might see a streak or two, but for the most part, um, this should be a very even background like this. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna 
put my brush in the water and let that soak for a little bit and let's let that dry for just a little while. The sky that I want to do has got several colors in it. All skies are not just cotton candy white fluffy clouds. Most skies have a lot of color actually. This one we're going to do this morning has got some pink in it, a little yellow highlights, and then I'm also going to do a really dark cloud going right through the middle here. So while this is drying, I'm going to get my colors on my palette. You're going to want to use titanium white. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow to show some warmth. So you have your, this is a cool color. Your yellow is a warm color. I'm going to also use a little burnt sienna. I like getting a little radical with my clouds and this is a pretty radical color for a cloud. And then a little bit of black. This is ivory. Don't have too much in here, but I hope we can squirt out just a tad. There we go. And I want to get my blue. I'm just going to leave my blue on the other palette, but these are the colors I have to start with the cloud tutorial. Now, I tell you a good brush to do clouds with is a cruddy old brush that you've given up on. Um, some of these brushes I'm going to use this morning, I probably wouldn't use for any of my fine art projects, but they're great for doing clouds because they're rough, they're kind of frayed, some of them are kind of stiff, and that helps a lot. A fan brush is an excellent brush to use for clouds as well. So I just went through my, um, my tray of, of uh, brushes and I found my cruddy ones, and that's what we're going with. All right, I've got a picture on my phone I'm kind of going by. But let's go ahead and see how dry we are and just kind of place where I want some of these clouds to go. Now I'm going to get a little bit of white and a little bit of sienna on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of start placing where they would go. Let's try. Just get a, some paint and start do in a circular motion. Go up and around, and this is just kind of going to place where my clouds are going to go. And, you know, you can just look at a canvas and just kind of imagine where you think clouds would go. But if you've got a little art reference, it does help be able to place some of them. And remember that clouds have one little dense area most of the time. You've got to determine where your light source goes. On these clouds, it's going to come in from the left. So my left side will be a little lighter. Um, clouds are moving in the atmosphere. So the main thing you want to do is get water off your brush, get this cloud moving. And the way you can do that is through dry brushing in this swirly motion. I'm not going to go back and put any more paint on my brush for a while. I'm just going to use what I've got on my brush and see if I can't use it up. Most clouds, too, have got a dark bottom. Now, the one I'm getting ready to show you is uh, kind of fancy and spectacular. I saw it the other night, one Sunday night, uh, looking out, and I just stopped and took a picture. It was that pretty. Just got back from vacation, and my favorite thing is laying on the beach and looking up and trying to see if I can see any shapes in the clouds. And they're, it's pretty interesting. You can really see some interesting shapes. We're going to kind of place them right around here. Now, clouds also have depth. And how we create depth is through darker colors. So I'm going to add a little bit of black now and a little sienna. And I'm going to go in and a little blue. And I'm going to go inside and out create a little bit of depth. There's one cloud in front of the other, etc. Once again, I'm getting up with clouds. I don't like to use a lot of water. It, they don't fray like you want them to. Um, they fray better when you dry brush and your brush is all cruddy and crusty. Now this one, I'm getting dark down here. I'm adding more and more sienna. Guys, I'm just kind of doing my own thing, so I hope this works. A lot of artists do their clouds different ways. I've had success 
different with sometimes you'll have a bad cloud day and sometimes you'll have a good cloud day let's hope this is a good cloud day now I'm gonna put some scary dark down in here add a little blue to it here we go yeah this is gonna be a good cloud brush I think it's kind of frayed and yucky Now, we're going to go back once this dries and layer some of it, but they will come alive on their own lots of times. I'm adding some more sienna, black, and blue. Now, just keep pushing that paint around until it actually kind of comes off your brush. I mean, off your, completely gone off your brush. Just keep pushing it around. Now at the bottom of these clouds, you can either take it all the way down to your horizon and make it even down here, or you can make the bottom of your clouds kind of flat. That's your call. Here's a little more sienna. This adds a little warm and cool. Don't give up on me. These are kind of tough. And you might want to hold on to your <clears throat> whatever it is you're using because you are putting some pressure. I am. I'm putting some pressure on this canvas to get that paint off my brush. Now, going back in, adding some white. Layering this up a bit. Can you see them coming alive now? some more now one good thing to your edges on a cloud you've seen thunderheads where they look just very distinct that's fine and you don't if you want to edge on your cloud let's make sure it's a little soft and edgy uh, so you want to just kind of stipple in an edge here and there now at the top this should be dry enough let's go back with our white add some drama up here too Check this out. This, t this uh, white just makes these tops pop. Once again, our light source is coming in from the left. So that's where we want to highlight these clouds. Now let's start another dimension down in here. I like them thick looking. I think this is acrylic, but you can actually make it sort of look like an oil painting with the thickness of your paint. And we're not using much water at all, folks. This is mainly just paint on your brush. Now we'll get some more dark in here, add a little more drama. Um, I've done a lot of murals in my painting career and contractor's brushes are some of the best brushes to do clouds with. Like on a large wall, it hurts your arms because you're just pushing that paint around. But um, those contractor brushes work really well for clouds. And ceilings are hard. I don't like ceilings. And a lot of people like clouds on their ceilings. All right, now I'm going to go back in over some of this just because I want that drama. Here we go. I'm adding some more. Don't give up on me. I'm layering this. And you also want a little loose, flowy cloud off in the corner somewhere, maybe in the distance. So I'm going to try to get some of these way off in a distance. Down in here also kind of in a distance. Going back up with my white again. Going on top of some of this dark I've started. Here we go. This adds layers to your cloud formation. And sometimes you'll create uh, exactly what you want and other times you just have to keep working until it comes around. 
clouds are pretty to use in a bird painting, forest, anything. I really saw some pretty ones at the beach. Now down here, my light isn't quite as bright beneath, so I'm going to subtly add my white down in here and blend this all together. Adding my dark again until I get it the way I want it. I'm just going to keep playing until I get it. And that's what I recommend you do too. Just keep working and take this circular motion with a little crusty brush is a great way to get some good cloud formations. Don't give up on me. I'm going to keep layering it. Now, I'm going to add some humpy little areas of white down in here. I'm going to completely dry my brush off here. I'm getting too much moisture. Here we go. Now this is where your artistry kind of comes to play. You can kind of do your own thing. I'm going to get a smaller brush and add just a little bit here. Let's even go smaller than that. A little bit of detail within some of these little formations. And tighten up some of these cloud forms. I'm letting that uh, top layer dry, and then I'm going to hit it again. Let's go underneath this one with some dark. And the ones that are already floated off somewhere in space should be distant and not as easily. And I, just leftover, just leftover what's on your brush. There we go. That takes it far away. Here we go, I'm just hitting up some of these edges to give it some layering effect. Whoo! I'm going to do some more white down here. Now I am going to pop a rainbow on here and I'm not sure where exactly to put it, but I think it'll tell us. Get back and look at your painting, step back. Uh, when you start getting dimensional, uh, a step back helps you be able to see what it needs, where it needs it. And lots of times your painting's gonna look a whole lot better far away. I'm getting my big brush again, and I'm gonna get scary down here at the bottom. This is pretty. I love to see the orange and the darks in some of these clouds. And maybe I'm weird, but every now and then, especially this time of year, I like a good thunderstorm. You know, nothing damaging, but I just think it's so loud and so powerful sounding. I just think they're, they're really cool. Now I'm adding a little more blue and sienna together down here to give this bottom some scary hay, it might rain look. Here we go. This is a high velocity blue. You can buy these in the art stores. Um, they make the color really pop. My sister actually gave me these. Okay. A little more sienna down here. A little more black. You don't need too much paint with a cloud tutorial because you're gonna be dry brushing 
and this paint, you want it to go a long way. Now, one thing you've got to watch with acrylic is if it's not dry, sometimes the bottom layer will come up. So you do want to take your time, make sure each layer is dry. I'm kind of going quickly on this, but I think we'll be okay. Once again, my highlight's here. So this is where I want my lightest part. Let's leave some of that blue showing through right there, adding a little drama. Layering it up. Doesn't that look like a storm, kind of? Now I'm going to soften this down below with kind of a haze. Dry brush, dry brush. And I'm shoving this brush around. Look how nasty it gets. It gets really bad. That's okay. It's supposed to. Okay. Now I am going to dip just a little bit of water in here. See if we can't get some of this smoothed down. You can also use an extended paint medium that makes the life of your acrylic wet longer. I'm just kind of old school. I use the same old water medium for my acrylic. Here we go. Now I am going to take it on down where we had our horizon. I'm going to get into my dark cerulean blue. Make this kind of dark down here again. Lighten it up just a hair and I'm going to haze that out. Isn't that cool? If you had a great big canvas, skies would be fun. You could do orange here, gray here, white down here. This one is just a 16 by 20, so you don't have that much room to go crazy. But I did want to kind of show you how deep and far, and, and I'm not looking really at anything now. I sort of did to get my shape, but just kind of coming out of my head what we've got going on here. Haze this on down. You don't want any start stop lines down below. We want it to be hazy. Here we go. Get rid of my fingerprints. And we're not through. I am going to let that dry just a second. I'm going to go back into my pure titanium. And I'm going to do a few more highlights. Just to give it some more drama. Once again, you just have that thunderhead looking subtle piece at the top like this. Let it come off your brush. Use your finger if you need to blend a little bit of it. Here we go. A little more drama here. The more it dries, the more that white will pop. dark area. Make it via this a little more subtle. Here we go. And now imagine a, a forest in front of this. I mean, it, you know, your sky is a great important part of your painting. I had one wise friend of mine who was a collector of oils, old oils, say to me the most how you can tell a good oil, and I've said this before on this show, are eyes and skies. The eyes of a portrait and the skies of a landscape show how, how good the artist was, actually. Now, get my finger and I'm just going to kind of settle that down so you don't have a lot of start-stop. 
and every artist does them does their clouds a different way uh, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and I've seen a lot of artists do all kinds of different things fan brush uh, sponges uh, paper towels all kinds of things so you kind of do your own thing you can't go wrong with clouds here we go let's highlight just a couple of these distant ones just so that when you step back you'll still see them here we go I may flatten that one's supposed to be far away so I may flatten him out just a little bit don't want him to go completely away have you all seen the uh, social media pictures of people's faces where they'll actually post on there you know a really huge man's face or I mean clouds really are fun and they're they're beautiful and it's a wonderful way to escape life is to just <laughs> find a hammock this summer lay down and look at the clouds here we go a little more drama here have a floaty right in here somewhere and I'm gonna make the bottom of that one now okay I'm gonna do something kind of crazy so hang on let me get this finished and then I want to do something I saw this on a picture that I took the other day and I thought it was cool I don't know if I can do it for sure or not all right you get your dark blue I'm gonna get just a little bit of black I think this is the, a good brush to do this and this is a, a cloud that is in front of these cotton candy-ish looking clouds that we have right here. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda make a line where it will go. And I actually saw this the other night in the sky. I've got a picture of it on my phone. This is kinda what it looks like. Now before that completely dries, I wanna get back into my dark blue and black. And do the same kind of little toppers that we did on the white, but there's just a few of them on this dark blue little cloud. It was right there in front of the white one, like this. And it just came out of nowhere and just kind of pushed its way in. And this is kind of what it looked like. Isn't that cool? very very it just made it it just made it wasn't your typical cloud scene i mean i had to stop and take a picture it was beautiful and you had a few more little it's there it was very much just stopped it did not fade into the bottom it stopped just like this right there along the line of that cloud i'm going to get just a little darker with it just looking at the picture on my phone as I do this. This was pretty. Now it did fade a little over here, but the bottom of this thing was start stop. I'm holding my brush and just going steady like that. That's how it looked. A little more fluffy, whatever these are over here. And then there was a little small line here. Isn't that cool? Now I'm wiping the excess water off my brush. Still working with this dark cloud right here. I hope you get to take some time this summer and just do nothing but cloud gaze. You, you've earned it. You've worked hard, I'm sure. Find you a hammock somewhere this summer and just look at the clouds. Might inspire you to do a painting. Here we go. I'm serious. This is what this cloud looked like. It was just a dark, look here. And it went all the way across. It was thinned out toward the end. Let's see if I can't get rid of some of these canvas holes down here. Now 
one little dark area down here. Let me smooth that out. Get rid of those canvas holes. And you do that with using your water blending medium. There we go. There we go. Now, that's what it looks like. And I think that's pretty cool. It's, it's very dramatic. Right in the middle of all those fluffy clouds, it just paraded itself right out there. I'm going to add a little darkening here, and there it was. Now we've just finished the clouds, and I am going to attempt to do a rainbow. And what we want to do, I use my favorite angled brushes. The main thing you want to do with the rainbow, and these are kind of tough guys, get your three colors, go ahead and get them out on your palette. Yellow, red, and blue are your three primary colors for rainbow, and they do blend together you know, we're in the sky and they, you'll see green and you'll see purple because of how they haze together. I wanna go ahead and get these primary colors out on my palette, first of all. And with the rainbow, you want to start out with white. I know that sounds weird, but the main thing is it has to be hazy and it needs to look translucent or trans, like you can see through it kind of. It is just a vapor that the clouds create. And I love a rainbow. I wanna see if we can get this on this. And the main thing you wanna do, I'm starting out with a little bit of just a scratchy brush. And let's see, we want to do an arch. And this rainbow is actually gonna come, let me see. Let's have it come off the page. Let me see, let's start it here. And have it come down. I'm using white only, okay? Your arch is real important, there we go. And I'm just gonna scratch on with my white an area that we want the color to go in. All right, here we go. There's my white. And let's just get it kind of wide, actually. I may go back and put the tips of that cloud on top of that rainbow so that it's sort of behind. But I'm doing the white and I'm making it kind of wide. And it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of white coming off either side of your rainbow, that's okay. Um, there we go. It's kind of wide, but don't be afraid. It's got to be kind of a fuzzy wide anyway. Now, let's go ahead and while it's wet, I'm gonna start with red and just a little tiny bit of red blended in with my white right here. Now I'm gonna get some more water. Fuzz that on out. Ooh. <clears throat> We got to get that arch going. Rainbows, now they can be scary and hard. You can really, now I am going to go over the tops of that one cloud so that it's, that rainbow is behind it, okay? All right, here we go. Don't be afraid. We will get the other colors beneath it. All right, let's see here. Let's do red, yellow. Let's do your yellow next. I probably have too much paint. Let's try again. Here we go. And that will also, what does red and yellow make? It makes orange. So you might see a little bit of the orange in there. Once again, I'm just shoving this back and forth, back and forth. You're supposed to be able to see through it. Okay. Is your yellow down in here? I'm going to add just a tiny little bit. Just keep working with it till you see all your colors. And don't worry, I will adjust the clouds accordingly. There we go. There you are, Red. Now then, I'm gonna go into my cerulean blue down here. I'm 
hopefully. Let me add just a little bit of this teal blue and see if that doesn't lighten it up a bit. And the blue next to that yellow should create a little tiny bit of a green blend. Put my yellow back on. Now, I'm going to take my brush and just blend it all in and out. Let me get the blue back. Hey, this isn't any easy feat, folks. There we go. Now, I'm going to get water on my brush only. And I am going to water this thing down just a little bit. Ah. Pretty good size rainbow. Bring it on down, bring it on down. Now down here at the bottom, I'm going to Go back what this rainbow kind of took off, and I'm going to have these clouds sort of in front of it right here. And then we're going to go back into our strong highlight on this cloud so that it's kind of in front of that rainbow. And that will really cover a multitude of sins. And it sort of shows that rainbow kind of behind some of these clouds. Let me get my smaller brush. We're getting into some high detail with these clouds again. Oop. Didn't get all my yellow off. That's okay. There is yellow in your whites most of the time, especially if they're sunlit. Going back into my white again. Now, guys, I'm going to go up here and kind of auto-correct this blue just a little bit. And I tell you why I'm doing this rainbow is for Frida Board Wine. She said, Lisa, do a rainbow. So here you go, Frida. Now I'm going to go back and put some of these clouds in front of this rainbow. And I think it'll help it look a whole lot better. Here we go. So that rainbow is behind some of these gorgeous clouds. You can even throw one kind of in front of it like this. That way you're not committed to an ending down here necessarily. You know how they'll just fade away out into the atmosphere. There you go. Let's fade that sucker away out into the atmosphere. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little cloud up here. Just a small one. Look here. You can really clean up something with a cloud. Here we go. Get my dark underneath it. Make this look like it was supposed to be there. Circular motion, get my finger and just kind of sway that around. I'm going to do a little dark beneath it again. Here we go. Straggler down here. 
Now, let's get some more of this on top of that rainbow. That was fun. That rainbow's there. But it's in and out of some of these clouds, which I like that. I think it looks, it's not so contrived. It's not like, here we go. It's not like uh, it was an afterthought. Get my finger and smooth this around so it's hazy, but you still see it. This is kind of crazy, guys, but I hope it helps you when you start to paint some clouds. Okay. Now, I think we're done. Maybe a little more white right here, but I want to see that rainbow through those clouds. So we don't want too much. I want to see some of that back there. There we go. There's our Crazy Sky tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the art corner today. Stay creative. <laughs>